And that's it for business news. Let's now continue with the rest of our stories. And the fate of nearly 200 workers of the Greater Accra Passenger Transport Executive operators of the Ayalolo bus system hang in a balance as the company struggles to gain its feet. 244 of the company's buses have been grounded, causing the loss of 28,700 cities daily due to its inactivity. Godfred Tanam assesses the viability of the novelty transport system in Ghana. Transportation required in several aspects of human life is crucial to national development and appealing the economic growth and development of nations. Singapore has one of the best and most affordable public transport systems compared to 24 major cities across the world, according to consultant Fern McKenzie. It is therefore not surprising that it is counted as one of the Asian tigers and one of the world's leading economies. Many of such economies are practicing the bus rapid transit system which was first introduced in Curitiba, Brazil in 1974. 166 cities and six continents as at March 2018 had implemented the BRT systems accounting for 4,906 kilometers of BRT lanes and about 32.2 million passengers every day, of which about 19.6 million passengers ride daily in Latin America, which has the most cities with the BRT systems. Introduced in Accra in 2016 by the Mahama led NDC administration under the local brand name Ayalolo, which literally translates into On On We Go, it was intended to ensure the rapid movement of people following congestion on the roads due to the population bust in the capital. On infrastructural development, terminals, bus stops, and other bus priority measures were undertaken along the Masaman CMB to the corridor. They included the construction of the Masaman of Angkor and Achimota bus terminals, 15 specific stations, 27 simple stops, 300 solar street lighting systems along the corridor, junction improvement works and provision and installation of 16 solar traffic lights. Government procured 245 Kenya high occupancy buses with each carrying up to 86 passengers with an electronic ticketing system, GPS receptors on board computers, CCTV and communication systems. Just as in other countries, special lanes were designated to enable patrons avoid traffic, reduce travel time and increase productivity. But wasn't the system bound to fail right from its implementation when recalcitrant trotro taxis and private car drivers took over the designated lanes, particularly during rush hours, as helpless law enforcers and city authorities looked on? We had it wrong to start with. So if we had it wrong, what do we do? We have to go back and correct it. Right? We had one situation where buses ran from uh, somewhere around Kaswa uh, using. Um, the graphic road and so on and so But that is not uh, BRT. That's not only one bus lane. What about other places like Adenta and so on and so forth? And I believe it was uh, politically motivated just to tell the people of Ghana that yes, we have uh, Ayalolo in place, but it's wrong. It's really a waste of money. Sometimes when you arrest uh, an offending vehicle and you, you impound, the, we have a car pound within the Achimota New Terminal. They come in, and depending on the class of vehicle, the size of the vehicle, they pay 150 CDs or 250 CDs uh, minus the towing. If it is towed, I think there's an additional charge of 100 CDs. You do get a lot of calls to say, oh, this is my boy, this is a constituency chairman. The name dropping and the post dropping are endless. The bus stops have been turned into something else, traders, social deviants, 
and other people have taken over. To many patrons, the grounding of the buses is affecting their livelihood. My car have money on it, but I can't take the bus. The bus is long. Plenty can carry more passengers and the price is affordable. So since the cars are no more working, uh, even if um, passengers are suffering a lot. Right now, that uh, they say they are not working. It's not good at all because right now, the church we are using right now, they are not enough. I mean, I buy a work on her four times. This is the fourth time I have been here. The Ayalulu helps us a lot. It is not the making of the Ministry of Transport because, fortunately for us, we are the ministry responsible for transportation. That is why my minister want to move around together with the Ministry of Local Government so that we can come together because the arrangement is that the local assemblies managed by their board, which is the Greater Accra Private Transport Executive, that should manage it. But looking at the way it is going, we need to have a second look at the general operations of what Ayalulu is doing now. From 1,400 passengers daily with 34 buses, patronage grew to 14,000 passengers daily before the rapid decline to its present situation. The company at this peak was making at least 28,700 cities a day. This means it has lost 861,000 cities in just one month. So what could have compounded the problems leading to the grounding of 245 buses at the Chimota bus terminal? Whatever income that comes in, basically from ticket revenue, that is what is used in support of the service. Even though it's a social intervention policy, the whole thing is run like a private entity. And then a private entity running at um, not very competitive prices that affects the bottom line. But a greater Accra passenger transport executive operators of the system say it is in talks with government to get the buses back on the road. The Ministry of Transport had issued a directive to us to release 50 buses to the KMA, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly. Those buses have been sent, but the rest are still uh, at the terminal here in Achimota. When you go to airport, you know when, when passengers come from the plane, the Ghana Airport Company have buses that pick the passengers from the, the, the aircraft into the Arava Hall and all that. They've sent some few buses, which they have some arrangement with Ghana Airport Company. They also want to send some to our investors, for example, like Legon, like Tech, so that with the support of the university administration, that they can be picking students to their lecture theaters and all that, so that these buses will not be lying fallow. So why will Ghana's implementation of the popular transportation system suffer several setbacks? Very, very difficult for us to get the Ayalolo buses in place, right? People have stopped patronizing them for a reason that they are running them as a common truck truck, a common commercial vehicle where you sit in, you stay in traffic, wait for other vehicles to move in front of you, as well as wait for the lights, um, what tra traffic lights to turn green for you to move, right? It's going to be difficult, and I, I don't think Ghana is really ready to operate the BRT system. Earlier, public transportation systems suffered a similar fate. The defunct Omni Bus Services Authority, OSA, was divested in 1995, while the State Transport Corporation has metamorphosed into different companies over the years. The Metro Mass Transit Limited introduced in 2003 during the Kufo led NPP administration is also struggling. And currently, the $95 million project funded by the World Bank, Agence Francaise de Development, Government, and Global Environment Facility Trust Fund appears to be going waste. So, where did Ghana get it wrong? I believe the political intervention in some of these things. Are the main cause. If Ghana is not ready for us to run a BRT system, why do you even bring the buses? You don't bring in the buses to say, oh, hooray, yes, we are going to have a BRT system, we are going to have an Ayalulu system. As a Ghanaian, I think it is really wrong. But the Public Relations Office of the Greater Accra Passengers Transport Executive, Gapti Fred Chidi, is confident the challenges will be addressed and the system extended to other cities. There are plans to expand the service onto other corridors. For example, we were just about starting the Adenta to Accra CBD, uh, where we, would in, we intend to deploy about 50 buses. We are also considering the Tema Accra 
Beach Road corridor, which would also take a similar number of buses. The Kaswa service, we intend to expand it uh, from the current 15 to about 50 because there are other routes that we have just done some mapping for. We need to bring back Ailolo as soon as possible because they don't have money. When they started initially, there was no working capital to start operations of Ailolo. So we need to get a minimum of 90,000 liters of fuel, 45,000 to start operations with, the, another backup of 45,000 liters so that we can start. And in starting, there are some backlog of pay of these drivers that have not been paid. And my minister is also going to look around to see how we can organize some money, at least to cushion these drivers so they can come back on the roads. Some commuters have suggested that the card system should be abolished to make it possible for the non-card users to get access to the buses, something they believe will strengthen the finances of the company. But whether these buses will get back on the road, no one is able to tell. And until the buses are operational, the nearly 200 workers will need to find something alternatively to do for survival. Godfrey Tanam, TV3 News, Accra. Coming up as Sports News with Yao Ufosulabi.